Hi guys, Ashantin here. How are you? This is another edition of Poetry by the Firelight. Now a friend of mine has told me that there's a particular poem called To Homer by John Keats that apparently is set for the Russian guys who are studying English. And I have to say this is one of the most difficult poems I've ever read. The scanning is appalling. It's really difficult to read, let alone to speak. And also it's to Homer and there are lots of classical references in it. So this is not the easiest of poems. So I'm going to have a go at this. There are two lines that are fabulous in it. So this is to Homer by John Keats. Standing aloof in giant ignorance of thee I hear and of the Cyclades, as one who sits ashore and longs perchance to visit dolphin coral in deep seas. So thou wast blind, but then the veil was rent for Jove uncurtained heaven to let thee live, and Neptune made for thee a spumy tent, and Pan made sing for thee his forest hive. Aye, on the shores of darkness there is light, and precipices show untrodden green. There is a budding morrow in midnight, there is a triple sight in blindness keen. Such seeing hadst thou as it once befell to Diane, Queen of Earth and Heaven and Hell. So guys, that is a really difficult poem, but I do agree with my Russian friend, and that is that the two lines, there is a budding morrow in midnight, and there is a triple sight in blindness keen, is absolutely beautiful. Now, I think what we will do, let me come back to my normal vision. Uh, let us put some more fire, more wood rather, on the fire. It's a waste of firewood, who cares? I love sitting by the fire. Let's sit down, get myself in view again if I can. It's quite difficult to actually get myself... Um, so that I'm looking at the camera. It seems to... Let me see if I can do this. Um, so if I sit down looking at the camera and then press F5... <laughs> let's stand up. Let's press F5, right. And that will get me... Let me look that way. Does that help? Or maybe that way. Oh, no, no, no. Back to the game. We don't want to do that. Let's sit down again. Try and get this thing to work. Right. <laughs> you may have to make do with my back, guys. Come on. Come on. There we go. So, guys... I like to swap a poem for a poem. And so, my Russian friend, as I look at you through the firelight, let me swap you poem for poem, because I know you like it just as much as I do, and I love poetry. But yours was a poem that was dealing with the classical age, so I am going to introduce you to a favourite poem of mine, which you might already know. This is only a fragment. And it was by one of the great classical poets, a lady called Sappho, burning Sappho. It's only four lines long. I'm not going to give you the version where they've made it rhyme, because I think it is less powerful than the version where actually um, it doesn't rhyme. And it is just the straight translation, which we would call blank verse if it's not, not rhyming in English. And so the far light has gone, but in your poem there were two beautiful lines referring to midnight. Now in this one, this, fra this fragment is called Midnight. Four lines, she says, the moon has set and the Pleiades. It is midnight. The time is going by and I recline alone. 
Now, I would say to you that you can have all the classical references in John Keats' poem that you like, all the difficult phrasing, but those four lines, the moon has set and the Pleiades, it is midnight, the time is going by, and I recline alone. I think that just sums up the sense of, you know, waiting for someone, being alone, not having a partner, anything you want to say. But that sense of emotion comes through in those four lines very, very well indeed. And I just wish that we had the whole poem. It would be so fantastic if we did. But that is not to be. I would also say that because she says that the moon has set, it is midnight and the Pleiades have set, the astrologers have been able to pinpoint exactly when that poem was written. So my Russian friend, over to you. Bye bye. <laughs>